All right, I'm gonna take it back to the early 90s, the best time to be a kid. Now we're gonna go to the year 1991 to play one of my favorite games of all time. Toe Jam and Earl for the Sega Genesis. Now looking at the box and the game cartridge itself, I wouldn't even know what to expect. You just see a red three-legged alien with no facial features besides his eyes, and then you got some fatter alien who looks like the love child of Duke Nukem and Patrick Star from Spongebob Squarepants. In all seriousness though, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Toe Jam and Earl was one of those games I bought from a flea market when I was a kid. There were so many flea markets in my neighborhood back then, where there were usually a ton of Nintendo and Sega Genesis games, and since I was a big gamer, I would always gravitate towards those. So many games from my retro console libraries are from flea markets, including Toe Jam and Earl. My brother and I saw the cover and found it funny and cool looking, so we took Gamble and bought it. It was probably 5 or 10 bucks, but whatever. So what exactly is Toe Jam and Earl? It's a game that gives you the role of the title character as Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam is the red one, while Earl is the cross between Duke Nukem and Patrick Star. You can play a two-player cooperative mode as both characters, with the first player playing Toe Jam, while the second player assumes the role of Earl, or you can play by yourself as either alien. I've always preferred TJ. He just looks cooler. The plot of the game is that Toe Jam lets Earl drive their spaceship, and since Earl sucks at driving, he crashes the ship on Earth, and as a result, their ship is destroyed with the pieces of the ship spreading all over Earth, and it's your job to find the pieces of the ship to get back to the planet. Funkatron. There are 10 pieces in total that you must collect. Each time you play the game, you're guaranteed a different experience. Total gameplay time can range from 30 minutes to even 2 hours. It's completely random. It all depends on how often there's a ship piece on the level. You can even go up to level 10 or even to level 30. The Earth is represented as floating islands in space, and you basically go exploring each level while avoiding enemies, which include little devils, what look like dogs running in big rubber balls, cupids who shoot arrows at you to fuck up the controls, a bunch of chickens that shoot tomatoes at you, fake evil mailboxes, demented dentists, sharks, hula girls, and the boogeyman. That dentist, by the way, laughs like a psychopath if he stabs you. If you're playing with a friend, you share the screen until you walk far enough from each other until the screen divides itself into two parts, so you can split up and cover more ground. The soundtrack to this game is one of my favorite parts of the game. It's been described as jazz, funk, and even hip-hop. Whatever you want to call it, it's one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a video game. The two biggest assets at your disposal are the map and presents. Each level has several presents scattered all over the place. By default, you start off with a few pairs of running shoes, but the vast majority of presents you collect during gameplay are completely random. And just as an extra kick in the nuts, they're not labeled, so you have no idea what they are or what they do unless you open the gift. Believe it or not, some gifts can hurt you or even kill you, but you have no way of knowing which gift will do that, so it's not even like you can have the option of being careful. It's a complete gamble. You can hold up to 16 gifts, which seems like a weird number, but whatever. So I've reached the maximum number of presents I can hold, so let's use one to make room for another. So I open up a present, and it's rose bushes. You press A to activate the weapon you get from the gift, and a rose bush appears behind you. So, alright, let's see how well these things work. I got this asshole dentist on me, so I'm gonna try to lure him over into the bushes. <sighs> get over here, you bastard. Walk into the bush. Look at that, he is deliberately running around them. What good are these bushes then? I mean, I guess I can't really complain though. I mean, that would be like being held at gunpoint and trying to reach over and pull the trigger yourself. Wouldn't make much sense. One annoying but funny present is the book. You're reading a book and then you fall to sleep and you have to press the buttons constantly to wake up your character. There's also a boombox that plays for about 10 to 15 seconds that makes every enemy in the level dance and therefore unable to attack you. Of course, I get this thing when there's no enemy around me though. This might be my favorite gift though, the Icarus Wings. They let you fly. I swear they last as short as of any gift though. Still, it's a fun gift. Let's see what this gift does. Fuck. 
Then there's the map. The map is a vital tool, obviously, as it shows you where you are, and you need to explore the level to uncover the tiles on the map. Sometimes you hear a phone ring. The phone keeps ringing until you find it, and if you do find it and you touch it, a few random tiles, usually around four or five, will uncover, potentially revealing the location of an elevator or the ship piece. Once you find the elevator, you go into it and it'll take you to the next level. Once you get to the next level, you'll randomly get the notification that there's a ship piece on the level, and if that happens, you should stay on the level until you find it. There's a chance that you'll find the elevator first, and you can get on it, but you'd have to come back to the level to find the ship piece, so you might as well stay on the level until you get it. There's also strategy involved too. You press B to access your inventory of presents, and you press C to access the map. But if you hold A while moving, you'll tiptoe, which is vital to sneak past enemies who are asleep. Not to mention you could also check out Tojam's sweet ass. Once you do find the ship piece, it's humorously set up as if it were some kind of attraction. So you walk up to it, and then it appears on the screen, and BAM! That's one down, and then it's off to the next level. As you get further in the game, the enemies will get more and more annoying and aggravating. One of the most annoying enemies is the Hula Girl. She just dances, and if you get close enough, you'll break out and dance for a few seconds. It doesn't hurt you, but it leaves you vulnerable to enemy attack, because you can't do a damn thing until TJ stops dancing, and sometimes he can dance for up to 6 seconds. I love the look in his eyes as he's dancing, though. It's almost like he's saying, <laughs> shit, I don't, I don't want to dance, but damn, that chick's got rhythm, so what the hell? Another annoying enemy is the Cupid. So, check this out. Here's a tornado. If you touch it, it takes you into it and it takes you around in random directions for a few seconds. And then it lets you go. It could be a 5 second ride, but then it could be 10 to 15 second ride. It's completely random. So it drops me off luckily on land, but then a second one appears and takes me before I can do anything. So I got another ride and here we go. It's probably gonna drive me to the previous level. Yeah, there's no way in hell it takes me back to ground in time. That's right, that means that if it lets go you happen to be in the space portion of the screen, that means you're falling down to the previous level. That sucks enough, but what makes it worse is there just so happens to be a cupid waiting for me, and he starts shooting me while I'm still bouncing and can't do anything. Once the cupid shoots you and there's hearts all over your head, the controls are screwed up. What that means is that the d-pad takes you in random directions. In other words, pressing up won't make you go up, but it'll make you walk right or even diagonally down. This lasts for about 10 seconds if you don't get too screwed up, but I've had it, I've had it last almost 20 seconds. Then there are these. Whatever they are. Groundhogs, maybe? They were a real pain in the ass, because if they touch you, they take away presents, usually about three or four. As you advance further in the game, the terrain becomes more hostile, like this quicksand. If you won't get to it, you sink. And it's not a really a slow sink, either. Other times, the game gets a bit carried away with how much it makes you travel. Take a look at this. I'm at the bottom of the map and I found the elevator, but there's a ship piece on this level. I've exhausted nearly every possibility and I just can't find it. By luck, I find a phone and look. It reveals where the piece is and it's all the way the hell up there. And look where I am. How the hell am I supposed to get there? I'm gonna try to jump the gap here and get to that path. What? A pathway formed, but it was too late. I was already committed to the jump. Yeah, sometimes when you get to the edge of an island, a pathway forms automatically, but only sometimes. And now, I just fell to the previous level. It takes me three minutes to get back to where I was. So, anyway, I go back and I get the piece, and now I'm trying to cross a pathway to get to the elevator, but this devil is being so obnoxious with blocking me. He knows that I need to go this way to get to the next level, and he's decided to be an asshole. It's not like I could do anything to him right now anyway, I don't even have a weapon. My only option is to wait until it decides to stop being a dick. I'm gonna use one of my presents. Oh, okay, it's a door. Walking into the door takes you to a random location on the map, which could be helpful. Let's see what this one brings us. What the fuck? Oh, I'm really fucked. I'm on a tiny island with this some fat bitch. And she wants three bucks? What the hell for? Hmm. Maybe if I give her the money, she'll somehow help me over to the island over there? Yeah, let's see what happens. She sings? What the hell, man? Alright, let's do it one more time and maybe we'll get a different result. You son of a bitch. I just wasted six dollars to hear that bullshit. How am I supposed to get off this island? Well, there's only one way now, and it's to intentionally jump off. Not like I have a choice. I've never had something like that happen before. The lives in this game work like this. In the beginning, you're a wiener by default. 
I don't know what triggers it, but after some time passes, I upgrade it to a doofus, and then I level up to a point dexter, and I'm given an extra life. Each heart represents a life. 20 minutes later, I upgrade to a peanut, and then get another extra life. Alright, so I'm on my last two lives, and I'm about to die, so what the hell, let's use some gifts. Alright, I got an inner tube. It's not gonna do me any good, so let's do something else. Okay, I've got root beer. Terrific, let's see what else. Now it's raining tomatoes. What else do we got? Whoa! Rocket skates! Whoa, that escorted quickly. Alright, let's grab the ship piece. Look at that, we're almost there. Only about three or four more pieces left. Yeah, how do you like that, you fucking game? Getting through that last bit in style. Alright, so there's the elevator over there. How do I get there? Oh, I've got a doorway. Hopefully it takes me there. Well... Shit. Alright, I go back to the previous level and find my way back to where I was, but I still don't know how I'm supposed to get to that damn elevator. Oh wait, I've got spring shoes. Looks more like a pogo stick to me, but, you know, whatever. Let's go for it. Yeah! Just made it! Alright, I got this boogeyman on my ass. What's this gift do? Oh, crap. It's the cloud of lightning. This thing literally stays until it kills you. And I'm on my last life. Well, that's it. Game over. I know you guys probably want to see the ending, though, so let's take a look at the ending. You collect the last piece of the ship and toe jam that funky little fuck, grooves it, climbs into the ship, and then he takes off. The credits roll as TJ flies through space in such a feel-good moment in video game history. After the credits, you get control back and walk through Funkatron, where all the aliens welcome you back like you're a hero. At the very end of the pathway, you find Toe Jam and his family, and it's all happily ever after. And it's such an awesome feeling making it to the end, just because this is a tough game to beat. So, that's Toji Arbano for you. It's a very simple game, but that's what I like about it. The fact that it's a very simple game with a simple objective. It's not all flash and no substance, you know what I mean? And in case you're wondering, I clocked in at about an hour and a half of gameplay footage, and I included the parts that I thought were the best ones. This game remains one of my favorite games of all time. It became a sleeper hit, and it was re-released on the Virtual Console in 2006, and then Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network in 2012, and all its 16 bit glory. There was even a sequel to this game, Toja Monero Panic on Funkatron, released two years later. And guess what? Yeah, you better believe I got this game in my collection. Am I gonna play this? It's up to you guys. So for now, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.